right, this is Cody Starr here. Today we are doing a little bit of a, I guess, a Texas music event preview. I am here with, uh, we're going to talk about Jub Jam, uh, Jub Jam 2017, and I am here with the man that is responsible for it all, the King Jub himself. Yes, thank G you King, for yeah. addressing me properly. <laughs> King George is already taken. <laughs> yeah, so, we yeah. can't go there. No, uh, no, no. So George Dunham here. How are you doing? Good, Cody. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Good so uh, let's uh, do a little bit of a reset since uh, not everybody watching this is from DFW, but right. you have been doing radio for 20-something years now? Uh, yeah, they were working on 23 years here at the Ticket, Sports Radio 1310, 96.7 FM in uh, Dallas. <laughs> And I've been in uh, Dallas radio since 1988 uh, when I started the Carol D right out of North Texas. And uh, yeah. And you got to say it's Marconi music. winning. No. Marconi uh, award winning uh, radio station known as The Ticket. Um, Rewrote the book on, on sports radio. We wrote it. You're the best sports it. radio uh, uh, station in the nation. Well, that's very nice of you. We're the, we're the most uh, downloaded station in the world behind the BBC. And um, yes, we are America's favorite radio station, <laughs> as we like to say. I don't know if we are now, but uh, we're on the air in Dallas, Fort Worth. That, yeah, we, and you we can, can, and you can stream yeah. it on the on yeah. the web. Yeah. But uh, and so we're here today to talk about you, your annual big event, Jub Jam. What number is this we on? This is number six. This is our sixth Jub Jam at the Kessler Theater, April thirteenth. Um, it is a sellout. You may be able to go on StubHub and get tickets. I don't know. Scout That's, tickets. For I think Jub so. Jam. You know, the first one we did. We did not sell it out. We did it at Gillies, and there were people that were selling tickets on StubHub to that one. So I'm pretty sure this one probably <laughs> has a secondary ticket market out there. Uh, but it's great. It, it benefits the senior source of Greater Dallas. Um, I have a soft spot working with the elderly. Both of my parents went through in-home care and went through a really difficult time late in their lives. They are uh, both been gone for a while. My mom passed away in 2000. My dad. And, in 2004 and both of them went through really difficult endings to their life. Mm -hmm. uh, luckily they had great care. Uh, my family was very blessed to, um, to have the, uh, the means and they had saved enough money to, to take care of them. And uh, the, the entire time though I went through that, it wasn't any less heartbreaking the fact that they had good care. And um, because of that I just, I wondered what happened to people that don't have you know, uh, sons and daughters that live in town that don't have adequate care, and that's where the senior source, a uh, Greater Dallas, comes in. And that's uh, I, I met with them shortly after my dad passed away, and started working with them on some fundraising ideas. And, and when I first got my band at around 2008 or so, I thought, you know, someday it'd be great to start uh, a music event and and do it for the senior source, and and we started it uh, six years ago, and. Uh, it's getting bigger every year, and it really has become an event, and that's 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 really what's satisfying to me. Uh, first and foremost, the help we give the Senior Source, um, a, a great organization, but it's pretty neat to see along with that how this little event has become, you know, an event, uh, a, a place that musicians really want to play, and um, a, a place where fans of Texas music can go and hear, you know, three hours of some really interesting and, and dynamic music. Yeah, talk about who you've had there in the past. You know, Wade Bowen. Right? We've had Wade Bowen. He was our special guest uh, last year. Two years ago, our special guest was Jonathan Tyler. We've had um, uh, Rodney Parker, 50 Peso Reward. Uh, we've had the Tejas Brothers. Uh, we've had Larry Joe Taylor. They all played at the first one along with Max Stalling. He's a busy man this time of year. Larry yeah, Jones. he is. <laughs> he is. Maybe someday we can do kind of a co-op thing where Jub Jam kicks off uh, Larry Joe Taylor week. But we've had the Damn Quails. We've had um, the oh, Province of Outlaws. I didn't know you had Brian White on there with you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh man, I love He's, those guys. Yeah. And I can't believe they broke up. I'm very right. sad about that. I hope Jub Jam did not do that to them. I don't, I don't think it did. But uh, Well, he told me, I don't. Yeah, I think it was. But it was? I, I okay. Well, <laughs> well, there we go. There we got confirmation. But, but, uh, not yeah. official confirmation. This is what I'm no, not here. official. Yeah. Uh, but we've had the Thieving Birds and then um, good friends of mine, because uh, I've made some good friends in the Texas music scene. Uh, Bobby Duncan, Steve Helms, Michael Padgett. Kylie Ray Harris is going to be there for the second year uh, this year. And I just always loved her and her voice. Yeah. And, uh, 
Yeah, I've just been really blessed meeting some really interesting people, and they've become my friends. And all I have to do every year is pick up the phone and tell them what date it is, and uh, they play. And uh, yeah, it's and, and it's it's cool for them too because I have my radio audience and then the the Texas music audience, and really they're two different things. Okay. And, and I've I've really introduced people who listen to our radio station who. Hey, 10 years ago, I really never heard of Randy Rogers or Wade Bowen or maybe Pat Green, maybe. Right. Um, but, you know, help introduce the music that both you and I love. And, right. um, and it's interesting uh, that people say, man, I've never heard of that group before. Uh, this year we have Flatland Cavalry, the young group out of Lubbock, who um, I just think the world of. Yeah, Cleto and yeah. Uh, Laura Jane, the fiddle player, she can she Yeah, can bring it. and she's from the Metroplex. So yeah, yeah, and then uh, their lead guitar player is from Farmersville, too. So Oh, really? Yeah. Farmersville Farmer. Okay. Yeah, he is. He is. <laughs> he is a local boy. So, yeah, they, they're, they're great. great. Yeah, they're, they're a great band. So, uh, so let's talk about who's going to be there. So, Flatland. Flatland Cavalry is going to be there. Uh, my friends Bobby Duncan, Michael Padgett, Steve Helms, and Kylie Ray Harris. They're going to form a super group. We're going to have much more of a jam feel okay. this year. They're going to all four play together and just, uh, you know, instead of one person taking one song, the next, you know, song swaps are great. I love them, but they're going to kind of jam together. And uh, we got the Gordon Keith band. So what's Gordon going to play? I heard a little bit about yeah, it's he's either Weird Al uh, covers or it's going to be something really Al. dark, right? Uh, uh, no, he's, uh, he's a big Jerry Reed fan has worked on his finger picking the last couple of years and he's turned into a really good picker. He's going to play Pretty Mary Sunlight for six hours like they did on Scooby-Doo. He, <laughs> he might. Yeah, I forgot Jerry was on Scooby-Doo. Yes. Uh, he's also a big James McMurtry fan too, so they'll play a lot of James McMurtry and um, maybe some Waylon. Uh, but Gordon's a tremendous musician and he, gets a, he has a really good band around him and then uh, Flyland Cavalry. And then my band, the Bird Dogs, is going to play. We're going to have a bunch of people jump up with us. All those people that I mentioned are going to jump up with us at some point. And then um, our special guest, Matt Boggs from Providence and Outlaws, is going to be there. And playing fiddle in our set will be Brady Black. Brady's, Brady's right. going to be here. Yeah, Brady's going to be uh, Jug Jam. So uh, this is his second time to do it. He did it uh, two or three years ago. And uh, Brady and I have become really good friends. I just think the world of him. He's the sweetest guy in the world. And uh, he and his wife, Bree, and they have two kids. And, it's just, um, it's been really cool to watch Brady grow up, you know, from being just a, the single dude playing in a band to being a dad now. And, uh, yeah, he's just such a good person. And uh, he's sweet enough to, and, I, and I, here's the thing, I didn't even ask him. He asked me. He said, when is Jeb Jam? And I said, well, it's this and this. And, yeah, yeah, come down. Okay, I'll play. Awesome. So, yeah, it's just, that's Brady. You know? wow. You've talked about why you got into music, Texas music, and uh, you talked to me about this on the phone a little yeah. bit, and how your motivations have kind of transitioned over the years. So let's let's talk about that for a second. Well, I was first motivated by going to a Randy Rogers show, and I listened to him and liked him and thought his music was good. And went and saw him, and man, it just it was like the Blues Brothers. That's it. <laughs> the band. I need to get the band back together, and I didn't really have a band. Um, didn't have one since high school. I was in a band called Pegasus. There's no yeah, one I heard, heard there's going to be a reunion, right? <laughs> I was going to ask you about that. I don't that. know. I don't think so. Uh, I don't think we had any originals. We played a lot of Foreigner. And I don't know. A lot of the Galley so. Winter people are like, they're really <laughs> wonderful. Pegasus getting yeah, back they're, together. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I was in a band in high school. And then, you know, I went to college and had to fight like heck to get my degree. And then started working in radio, became a dad. And I really didn't have much time for music. And grew up loving music, played uh, fiddle, violin, growing up, and um, and picked up guitar in high school and started playing that. But I had picked up either one of them in almost 15 years by the time 2008 rolled around. I, first, I saw Randy Rogers for the first time, or yeah, somewhere around there, 2007. So two, 2008, we formed the Bird Dogs. A friend of mine, Steve Porcari, used to work up here at the Ticket. I said, "Think about starting a country band. What do you think?" It's a great. I really didn't know what I was starting. I thought maybe we'd do one gig and be done with it. We did one gig and we were basically a Randy Rogers, Wade Bowen cover band and <laughs> barely got through about eight songs and uh, uh, you know a few other things. We played a Lone Star tune and you know just kind of all over the road. And But we started playing and we'd start practicing and, uh, and I'd bring him these songs. I said, hey, I started writing, what do y'all think? 
and they all said, well, let's play these. You know, this is a lot more fun, and they, you know, arranged their own parts and even had some suggestions, hey, why don't we do this, and next thing you know, we had eight songs, and I said, well, let's do a record, and I didn't really know where it was going at the, at the beginning, but I knew I wanted to play music, and I knew it was almost like cathartic, you know, I wanted to, to play and to play with a band. And I, I really had more fun at practice than I did at gigs because at gigs, people were looking at you with, with expectations, you know. Right. And um, but I, it's weird though, as I told you, I thought I'm doing this for a reason, and I didn't know really what the reason was, but I felt like it was something I needed to do. And you could maybe say, you know, maybe a voice from God told you, hey, this is what you need to do. Um, so anyway, we played and we made a record and. Got a little bit of radio play. We got up to number 67 on the Americana chart with our hope. Yeah. All right, there you go. And it was funny to look at the Americana chart and see the bird dogs and like three spots behind us, Willie Nelson. <laughs> scoreboard. Uh, uh, yeah, scoreboard. We scoreboarded Willie and Tom Petty there for a couple of weeks. But, uh, <laughs> but, it, but, it, it, but it, and that was really satisfying. It's on you your know? bedroom wall, right? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's just weird to see that. But even that, I, I didn't really know, okay, well, that's. That's not really why I'm doing this. I don't know why I'm doing this. And then we played a gig somewhere around 2011, 2012, and I mean it was your worst fear. Nobody was there. I like panic called a couple friends and say, "Hey, y'all live close. Could you come down here just so there's somebody out there?" And there was like three or four people there in the wait staff. And I remember thinking, "Okay, well, this is pretty much it. This is our last gig because why are we doing this? You know, right. no one's going to come out." And I felt bad for the. For the bar owner and I, I told him as much I said you know I don't want to take any money because I, I I just feel terrible um, and I didn't I, I didn't really know what to do at that point and oh, that's yeah. so you can't do this part-time and expect great results so why are you doing this and then um, about along the, that time is when uh, in my own community we had a, a tragedy a young man seventh grade went to sleep one night didn't wake up the next morning and um, he was a friend of my youngest son, and it tore our community uh, apart. We were all heartbroken, and we went to a um, a candlelight vigil for him. And as it was wrapping up, and the father took the microphone after all these uh, kids had talked about how much they were going to miss Alex Betzold, a shooting star went over our heads, and it was the brightest. I thought someone had shot a flare gun. And it was really um, a spiritual moment, an epiphany for me. I think it was for everybody there, but just a little background. About three weeks earlier, and just trying to write a song, I started trying to write a song about the presence of God when I felt it uh, the most. And it was when my, my kids were born. Um, strangely enough, on my dad's deathbed, uh, when he took his last breath, I just I, I felt a presence there that you know, as I saw life coming to an end, I felt a peace. I felt a peace for him, and it, it's indescribable. What I felt very similar to the feeling you you have when you watch your child being born. You know, mm -hmm. it's just you're overcome by maybe it's emotion. I think it's a lot more than that. But those three weeks before that um, candlelight vigil, I started writing a song, and I was going to call it a presence. And um, the line that I had was, you know, I felt the presence when I saw it all begin. There was peace um, when it came to an end. There was light, it was bright, and it was real. Well, I put that song on the, on the shelf for three weeks, and then this happened, and it was just like this epiphany, you know, that, mm -hmm. okay, finally we have a song with meaning that has true meaning. And I finished the song, and we recorded it. We, um, we gave the proceeds to that family, two other families that have lost their kids, and one in a drowning accident. Uh, they started the LD project, and then to the Storch family, they lost Taylor, and they started Taylor's Gift. And um, from that point on, really, the band took on this: "Hey, we're here to help people, and we've um, raised money through Jub Jam, playing for the Salvation Army, Sir Denton, the LD project, uh, Taylor's Gift, Shoot for the Stars Foundation, and um, after this Jub Jam." after Jub Jam 6, if you add up all the Jub Jams and everything we played and, uh, you know, been contracted to play for like a silent auction um, for a charity, it's we're going to be up over $400,000 raised for different charities. Fantastic. And 
that that's why I started this. I found out, you know, the reason. Okay. Thank you. So you <laughs> sold out Kessler in six days. So yeah. uh, you call him Jerry for AT and T next year? Maybe. Yeah. Um, Cubes, we have a AC right here. It's right here. It's right here. The American Airlines Center. I don't know. You know, the, that's the one thing that I mean. The event is starting to really grow, and we just love the Kessler so much. It is. A, I really do think square foot for square foot, it's the best music venue in the North Texas area. Yeah, a lot of people would not argue with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you're in the North Texas area, or if you're watching this from somewhere else in Texas, you ever see one of your favorite artists playing there and it's, it's worth the trip here to the Metroplex or if you live here in this area and you've never been, man, it's worth it to, to go and, and, and see some of the acoustics in there are just incredible. Yeah. Well, we're looking forward to it. Uh, I'm going to be there uh, covering it. So, awesome. uh, yeah, taking pictures, uh, hopefully doing some interviews, talking yeah. to people. Yeah. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be a great night, April 13th. Um, yeah, and that, that's a secondary awesome. market for tickets. But, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if you like what you've heard today and the message of hope and goodness for the elderly of Dallas Fort Worth, um, you can uh, you can make a donation. You can just go to the seniorsource.org and you know make a five dollar donation, or um, they take five million dollar donations too. If you want to, if you're a billionaire looking for a tax write off, it's a great thing. Uh, but they appreciate any sort of support, and you know that's that's the cool thing. All the ticket sales. All the uh, sign it all goes to the senior source. So, Fantastic. Yeah. Great. Thank you. I got one more question for you. Important, okay. Important question. Okay. So uh, I don't know if y'all got rules for this. So if I'm on the show, I'm tickets own. But if I interview, you, am I tickets own? Are we? Can we still? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, 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 st tickets I'll start referring to you tickets as own? tickets own. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, tickets on that? Yeah, I did say I'm my good. friend from uh, from the Texas Music Bowl. Right, right, right. Yeah, so, but now that you're, you're tickets own now. Yeah. There we go. I can <laughs> die a happy man. Bucket list, baby. Awesome, man. Thanks. All right, take care. Okay, thanks.